You remember when we started this channel about a year ago? Yeah. When we first started doing lineup reactions and the lineup for Heavy Montreal last year was the first lineup reaction where we ever did. And we, we were actually excited for yeah, it. And we were impressed about it. We intent we attended. It was awesome. And I remember immediately when we got back uh, from Montreal, we were excited for the lineup for this year. That we need to go and again was the said, immediate response. Was, we said, John, we need to go again. I said, you know, with the experience that we've been getting from uh, from this festival and even this city, I said, we got to go back. Yeah. I said, so the anticipation for the lineup, you know, we've been, we've been waiting for a while for it, obviously. The lineup is finally out. Are we going back? No. No, we're not. We are not. This is the lineup for this year's Heavy Montreal. You want our reaction to this lineup? One of us, I'll say me, I do not have a problem with this lineup. I have, well, actually, that's not true. I have one problem, one major complaint with the lineup. But overall, I actually kind of like this lineup. But you feel otherwise. This has been an issue that I've had that I felt has been building for quite some time. And I think, I, I would like to think that I represent a larger, much larger demographic uh, than myself. The issue that I have is that it seems to be that metal no longer is able to completely keep the spotlight in a festival setting. Real metal. Real honest metal. I'm talking, you know, bands that, that, you know, are maybe not so much on the radio necessarily. You know, this, this, this lineup, I was excited to see uh, what this festival is going to do. Um, and at I, the top, the top of the bill, we have Five Finger Death Punch and Disturbed. Two bands that I'm not very excited for. First off, I'll say Disturbed was guaranteed. No contest. No contest. As soon as they announced Immortalized last year, I said they must have gotten on the off the phone with tons of organizers of these festivals. Yeah, no saying, doubt. You know, you're gonna. You no want, doubt. We want you to headline. I said there's no, no way doubt. around it. Five Finger Death Punch. I did not expect. And as, I think uh, as at the top. I of think the it's bill. more so the congregation of what they got. I think it's disturbed package with Five Finger Death Punch. They really pushed me over the edge. Nightwish, I don't mind. I like Nightwish. No, Wish. absolutely not. I could. We I like. Could, we like. I like Nightwish. I like Nightwish. Volbeat. I love. I like Volbeat. Volbeat. I can handle Volbeat. You know, I can handle bands like Animals. Mastodon was supposed to play last year. Right, and there's a lot of bands. Well, there's a couple of bands that were supposed to play last year that couldn't. Yeah. Uh, um, After the Burial was supposed to play last year. There's a lot yeah. of bands that were off Samarian because a lot yeah. of the Samarian tour seems to con seems to be in conjunction, happen in conjunction with uh, Heavy Montreal and a lot of festivals. So we were waiting for a lot of those, but and this festival does feature some of their artists. It does feature animal Animals as leaders. Last year did feature Veil of Maya. You know, we, we do see a lot of things on this festival that maybe would have been go good, but unfortunately the headliners are such shit as a package that I'm sorry, but I'm not going to Canada for this. I'm not. And this seems to be a problem that happens with a lot of festivals. This festival was kind of like a beacon for me, personally, because I felt like this was going to be an opportunity where metal could really have the front seat. Last year we saw Corn, and whatever, it was Slipknot. But the, the, the entire lineup as a whole was good. But it seems to be that in today's age, metal cannot get the spotlight. Metal cannot get the true spotlight. What it has to be is these, these rock bands that, that come out like, you know what I mean? Whether or not they're, they're just completely mainstream bands that everybody knows. And the bands that actually, you know, are putting out good material can never get the spotlight. And we always just see the same headliners. And I'm getting... I'm getting repulsed by it. It makes me not want to engage in festival anymore. It may, I find myself looking to go to less and less shows because the, the shows are just repeats and mix matches of the same shit. You never see new things. You never see people that maybe you didn't think would get the spotlight, maybe sometimes get the spotlight. But it seems to be that people want to get in this perpetual cycle of, of watching uh, bands like Slipknot, Five Finger Death Punch, and the same stuff over and over and over again. And it's like, I'm not willing to travel that far to watch it. I'm just not. I've seen it already. I've seen I've seen it a million times. I know the material. Like, it's just not, it's not engaging to me in the way that I want it to be. The festival, in my opinion, needs to be engaging for people. It needs to be something that's new. It's, it's every year, it's okay to have some of the same people come back. But at the same time, 
you want to also make sure that you're giving this festival a new breath of life. You're giving it each year is something a little bit, maybe a little bit different. And, and as that, that does tend to get a little bit difficult, if you're good at organizing a festival, you can do it. OzFest did it for a long time. OzFest is a festival that I think needs to come back. We've said it before when we were talking about what is going to be the, the future of festivals. Will OzFest come back? I pray to Jesus that OzFest comes back every day. OzFest was a was a was a beacon for metal, and North America seems to just be lacking in comparison to everything that happens in Europe. If you look at Hellfest and Walkin, the festivals are just so much larger, and it just seems to be. I posted a big thing about it today. It seems to be if it's not a Dell or a Cat playing a piano, people don't want anything to do with it. And it's it's kind of just it, it just hurts me because I feel like it's not a personal attack on my culture, but it's like I feel like the things that that I know can never get the spotlight. They're always a back seat. They can always just be there. Mm. And it's just the same things because a lot of festivals are so worried about losing money. If you look at what happened with Mayhem Festival, Mayhem Festival completely collapsed and that's owned by the guy who runs Warp Tour. There's no real reason for that to have financially collapsed other than they had a difficult time getting people to go because the rosters were so difficult to maintain. And that, and that can be due to a lot of reasons. It can be due partially to the fact that there's not many new bands that are coming out that are being able to hold those kinds of positions. I mean, what bands have recently come out that you think that can hang in a big festival setting and headline? None. It's going to be on the bill 10 years from now. What's that going to look like? If it looks like this now, I mean, it's just going to get worse. This has nothing to do with the fact that like these bands got on a headliner. I'm not upset about that. I'm upset about the fact that they continuously get on the headliner and that's all they can do. It's the same band over and over again. And if this was earlier, this would not have happened. I think in a lot of ways, the decline in festivals represent the decline in music as a, as a whole. And it's this genre of music as a whole and its ability to actually stay afloat and succeed. My take on it is that I'm, I'm not one that doesn't enjoy this lineup. I fairly enjoy this lineup. You know, this is something I would attend if I was able to. But you know, I mean, for the most part, our party does not want to attend, so I won't be, obviously. My argument here is that this is what sells. That's this, the, but this, that's... At the end of the day, this is what sells. A metal and rock shot, uh, you know, type of festival is just what is the, you know, selling point. You know, organizers know this. My complaint about this lineup for Heavy Montreal is I think that there was much better choices for headliners available. Absolutely there were. Absolutely they you were. You know, there these was... these bands that they could have potentially had have have Montreal dates. You know, they could have they... worked with them to book them at a later date. Bands like Black Sabbath, who's on their final tour and is Why not, would you not get Black Sabbath? And is not coming back after this apparently. Were they not? I won't hold my breath on that. Iron Maiden just put out the Book of Souls. Right, and I would kill to see Iron Maiden. I've never gotten to see Iron Maiden. Tool is potentially putting out a new album. I won't hold my breath on that either. I've been holding my breath on that for 10 years. Yeah. I mean, in the end, maybe these these bands are probably too expensive to probably put on this festival. So, you know, putting them on this festival, might they might have to cut back on the number of bands. That's that just they such have a to shame do. that art... So, they have to resort to what's best. And you know what's best for business is Five Finger Death Punch because of that large fan base and Disturbed. It's because just, they've come back from hiatus and they've put out that new album. So that is what potentially is, you know, best for the lineup. But Unfortunately, I think, I I mean, think not everybody's going to agree with that. So many bands did put out good material and so much stuff has come out. And this is what gets the spotlight for money yeah. rather than art, rather than... Back in the day, dude, people would put out music and they didn't give a fuck. They didn't give a fuck about what what sold. They didn't care if it was on the fucking radio. Metal, the, the charm of metal has been that metal's supposed to fucking offend you. Metal is not supposed to be something that fucking is, is on the radio. Metal is not supposed to be something that, I mean, in terms of what it started as. Metal was a very edgy thing that branched out, you know, like it... In, in the same sense as like anything like punk or hardcore or anything like that, a lot of it was underground and and 
people have lost sight. The radio friendliness of things and the political correctness of things has seeped into metal culture. And we see it changing more and more how it's affecting the events and things that happen. We see bands slowly becoming corrupted by trying to be radio friendly. We see bands because they can't survive that way anymore. They can't survive by record sales. They need live shows. They need people to attend the shows. So what's going to get them to come to the shows is this mainstream thing, and they've got them by the balls. It can't go back. It's changed forever. It's been changed by the media. The media got to it. The media got to metal, and it got to the population, and it got to it got to being affected by all of it. And metal was always this thing that was separate, and it was always this thing that I didn't give. I don't give a fuck about what you think about me. I don't care. Like I don't care. I'm gonna make what I want to make, and I don't. And what it is is what it is. It's like the money has completely come in control of of where it goes. Dude, that just happens with everything. Right. It does. Yeah. It does. But it does, and it and it's sad to see it happen to such an amazing form of art, and that's why I get so upset about it. That's why I react when I see things like. Five Finger Death Punch Disturbed because it's such an easy way out. Like I said, who's going to headline 10 years from now because a lot of these bands won't. They'll be gone. Who's going to headline? It's going to shift again. That's how you organize a festival is you're a good observer of how culture and music is shifting and for them to continuously stay in the same rut is not a good thing. Disturbed I can understand because Disturbed put out a new record and they've, been on, and they've been on hiatus. And they've been on hiatus for a long time. I can maybe understand that being a headliner. If I was going to let one slide, it would be them. Five Finger Death Punch was an absolute upset for me. And the package deal of it was enough to make me not want to go. And I was absolutely set to go. Nothing would have stopped me from going to Heavy Montreal this year. And that, We're not going to get into it now, but they're not the only festival that's done this that looked promising. And I decided not to go because... I'm not paying money to fly out to watch that shit. It's not good representation, I feel, of of true metal culture. Five Finger Death Punch obviously obviously has the fan base. You know, it's it's you can't argue with it. You know, it's it's that's why they're at the top of these bills now. They've built themselves up to where they've built up this large fan base. But it's you know, it's 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 an easy argument whether you think they suck. Yeah or not, you know, it's everybody can argue that, but it's subjective. I mean, but I think as a whole, you know, it's just the way that it's a business. Yep. That's what this lineup. That's what this. That's what the, the heavy Montreal lineup for this year represents to me is that this is a business, and you know they have to do what's best for business, even if it, even if people don't like it, they see whether the majority of the people will love it. You know, if they see potential in it, they have to do it. It's sad to see that happen, though. You know, and then there's people like yourself that feel that way. Like, you know, this absolutely sucks. You know, I feel yeah. like I'm being shafted. Yeah, I do. I, genu know? I genuinely felt it. I took it almost. I took it as an insult that that is the best that a major festival is able to do at this point is a kick in the nuts like this. Other festivals that are happening right now are literally the same headliner that happened for Heavy Montreal last year. Mm. Minus day two. That's all they can, that's literally all they can do. Because that's the only thing that they can fill an arena up with. Because there's no other bands to put up there. I guess we're upset to say that, you know, to the the followers that we had from that first lineup reaction we did for Heavy Montreal that were not coming back. We would, I would have loved to have gone. I had so much fun in Montreal. I was, Man. I was so looking forward to buying the tickets. I was ready to buy tickets the first day. I can't go because nobody else wants to go. <laughs> we refuse to go. No. Refuse to go. And it's not just me. It's, you know, other people that we would go. I know a couple of other people that we attended with the Heavy Montreal will not be going. We don't want to see that lineup. And, and it's a representation of a large demographic. It's a change of the festival's priorities and what the festival's priorities are. And at the end of the day, they've chosen money which is understandable but at the same time a tragedy because at once again you're stuck in the you're stuck in the gap of do I take the money 
or do I take the art form? And a lot of people are going to argue and say that it's still a, it's still a valid art form and whatever. And that's your opinion, but a large demographic feels as though this is not a valid representation of the true art form. And for a lot of people don't really understand where metal as a, as a whole is heading. And no other bands, they're not able to give bands that sh those shots anymore because bands A don't are not able to sell records anymore and B the festival owners are afraid of the festival's collapse which we see happening more and more and more it's a death of festival life that's how i feel sorry <laughs>